Japanese marched toward the southern port. Equipment rolled down the road. Men and machines took their places in the waiting ship. The men were British, American, Canadian, some of them veterans of Africa, Sicily and Italy, some new to battle. They lay in the harbors of the south coast a day longer than planned. The invasion had been scheduled for June 5th, but bad weather in the channel had caused a postponement. The weather was still bad on the 6th, the sea promising to be choppy and dangerous. But the order was given, and the ships put out of the ports toward France. On board, the men were quiet, tense, grimly elated. The long years of training and waiting were behind them. Just over the horizon was the beginning of the final battle against the Germans. They could look around them and see the overwhelming strength that had poured from the Allied docks, factories, and arsenals. A screen of naval vessels from battleships to PT boats guarded the convoy across the channel. Back in Britain, paratroopers marched out to their planes and embarked for the trip to Normandy. soldiers were going to put foot on French soil was close at hand. To make the foot soldiers' job easier, our planes struck at roads and transport, leading up toward the threatened coast. hundred feet ahead lay France. Two of the architects of the operation kept a watchful eye on proceedings. And a well-known soldier boarded a naval vessel early in the affair. The Luftwaffe was not entirely absent. Heavy supplies were landed quickly on the beaches. And men kept pouring in.
The unloading went on swiftly. brought down Allied soldiers, but others kept on. Craft sank in the rough sea, and many rescues were effected. Fires dotted the battlefield, but the work of securing the beachhead went on. 